My name's Al Strainer. Um, I'm a site test conductor with the Space Shuttle Endeavor and second generation space worker. Her job is uh, getting her ready and uh, space flight worthy from the orbiter processing facility. If you owned a recreational vehicle and you were going to take it on a very long trip, before you did that, you would probably put it in a garage and you would ask the mechanics to check everything. When you put the space shuttle, the orbiter, in the orbiter processing facility, the OPF, you do just that. It's very tight, and uh, we look at it very close. We're less than six inches in a lot of places. We got it spotted in here, and it's less than eight hours from being in space. We're back here in the OPF. Uh, there are thousands upon thousands of individual tiles on the space shuttle. We inspect every one of those. The um, tires, the main gear, come off. The brakes are they come off and are refurbished and, and uh, reinspected, reinstalled. Every landing when the bird comes in, we check for meteor strikes, scratches that may occur, the end of your hair, if you looked at it, that's the size that we look for on the window. And you have to locate every one. We inspect it, and then the technicians come in and clean it behind us so the astronauts can see for the next mission. One window, an inspection will take about two to three days. Polishing would take two shifts. You have to scrub on them eight hours. If there's a certain amount of damage within a, a specified area on the window, they have to pull it out or send it back to pointing. When you get into the payload bay area where we have the cargo, you're getting into a clean room environment. We have um, bunny suits, which are a, uh, an ensemble to stop hair or any type of uh, contamination from the humans from getting into the machine. Like a hair in zero G can affect an astronaut's breathing. Uh, inside the crew, crew module, the radios are checked, the uh, navigating radar is checked, the, all the communications panels. The uh, computers run through a series of checks. So all those systems get a check out. And I think you have to realize that when the shuttle was built in the late 70s, uh, computer power uh, was not very readily available. So that now the shuttle is outshone by your PC that sits at your house. Uh, in fact, each of the five flight computers only has 256K of memory. Probably have more uh, compute power under the hood of your car. In order to sell the shuttle to Congress, NASA kept downsizing it to a more and more modest vehicle and a vehicle that could increasingly use existing technology. In the early 70s, the shuttle was designed to satisfy not just NASA's missions of civil space, but it was designed to handle all the military payloads and it was designed to handle all the commercial payloads. That's putting all the eggs in one basket. The shuttle they ended up with clearly was a camel. That is, it was a horse designed by a committee, and um, it served no one's purposes. It was a good design. There were some compromises. But do we want to continue to whip NASA for a decision that was made 20 years ago? I'm blessed. I get to uh, walk away from my desk and walk up into a work stand and look at a spaceship. My uh, father worked out here, Gemini Apollo, and the start of the shuttle. My family um, is concerned. It's always been very admirable to help put men in space.
Space flight is a, is a unique environment. It uh, starts with uh, the lack of apparent gravity. When you're taking away your environment now, that, that my system was not designed to be in. And even if you had all the money in the world, you cannot simulate zero gravity. <laughs> so, and that oftentimes presents the biggest challenges when you get up there, is dealing with that and operating in that environment. Flight Up there, you're on a different time. The sun goes up and down every hour and a half. And depending upon uh, your kind of work and sleep schedule, you have a different form of time up there. Right now, what we can identify is that there are risks, both for things such as bone loss, muscle loss, equilibrium changes, blood pressure changes, heart muscle changes. Um, we're trying to see um, what those risks are. Like the cardiovascular system, uh, it doesn't have to move blood uphill, it doesn't have to move blood out of my feet to get up to my heart. And bones, after a long period of time, they, they become more porous and they start to go away. The loss of calcium from the bones, um, it begins immediately, but it continues probably at the rate of about 1% of your long bone calcium per month. In the middle ground, uh, things that uh, occur over uh, a week or two weeks, and that is the loss of muscle, because I don't need to use muscle to move around. I walk with my hands instead of with my feet up there. Everything takes longer to do when you first get up there, whether it be going to the bath bathroom or preparing and eating your meal or ex getting ready to exercise on a, on a bicycle that we carry up there or, or anything. If I'm sitting here in this room and I were to drop a pencil, I would begin looking on the floor on the tops of the tables and the tops of the chairs in the room, but in zero gravity, the pencil could be floating right here behind my head, and I could spend you know, minutes looking for it until some other crewmate says, well, turn and look, it's right there. Okay. 